The church can be described as the people of God. Like the chosen people of old, we travel together being influenced by each other. There is a communal as well as an individual aspect to our lives. Like any organization involving people, there's a call to change as circumstances are different and we are to make decisions that meet the current situation as occurred in the Acts of the Apostles. The world changes, but we have the truth of Jesus to guide us as to how we might adjust. This is relevant as we reflect on where we are and what may be the way forward. Many of us can look back to a time when the bark of Peter seemed secure, sailing on calm waters, with those in charge seeming competent, with an apparent supply of good crew members. That ship has hit stormy waters, where the frailty of all the foregoing has become evident. Indeed, the church could seem more like a shipwreck at this time. The story of Paul and the shipwreck of Malta could speak to us as we read in Acts 27. What they were familiar with broke up, but God's fidelity was promised and no life was lost. The crew and the passengers were all in together in what happened, and God guided them to safety. It is important to remember God's fidelity in our ongoing journey together. There's much discussion on the notion of a synod at this time. We are all in it together. The words synod, synodality, and synodal pathway are being talked about. They overlap each one telling us something, but they are not quite the same. Some clarification may serve as we discuss the way forward together. To arrive at a synod, there's need of a process, a synodal pathway, a means to attain the desired end. Each of us could be clear on something that should be changed for the better. It is clear that some aspects of the church functioning needs to change. This could come from a discerning process that seeks what the Lord desires for us at this time. Synod can be understood more as an event, an outcome of reflection, of prayer, of discussion, to get a clearer sense of what the church members believe in the search for the way forward. The Synod is a gathering where decisions or recommendations are made by a particular body and in due course are circulated back to the members who are instrumental in putting them forward to begin with. Initially, there are meetings at local level that provide a forum for discussion, for dialogue, to get the opinions and concerns of the people for the church and its direction forward. There can be recommendations on what should be given emphasis and what might be changed. These proposals are forwarded to the next level, whose task it is to coordinate the suggestions from the various subgroups. The process could go from parish to diocesan to national level, and finally to Rome, where some group is to come up with guidelines or decisions, having reflected and prayed on all that came to them. It would be hoped that the final report would reflect on what was sent forward from the other levels. What is key in all of this is the quality of freedom of the participants at all levels. Good suggestions might not be forwarded to the next level. What is decided at the end might not take account or have little reference to what is proposed at various sub-levels. There are many limitations that can come into play during the process and which can lead to conclusions that are disappointing to many. The composition of the deciding group at each level is important as to what is heard and what is sent on. A prayerful, discerning meeting will help us be in touch with what the Spirit is saying to the Church at this time. Synodality might be described more as a process involving prayer, reflection and dialogue. Acknowledging that where two or three are gathered in the Lord's name, the Lord is present. Matthew 18, 20. It invites each of us to reflect and pray 
and to acknowledge the need of personal conversion as basically to be open to listen to the Lord and to others. Besides, there's a common call to conversion, as all of us as church are to be changed in the process. The soil needs to be weeded and tilled if it is to be ready to receive the seed and be fruitful. This facilitates openness to the ways of the Lord, to the truth of God's ways, so that we can enter into genuine dialogue in our search together for what the Spirit is saying to us now. Each of us needs to be set free from prejudices and opinions that can be out of harmony with the Lord's desire for us. In some ways, the process may be more important than the outcome. Prayer and reflection can lead me to change, just as the sharing of others can do also. I can draw strength from others and come to a deeper sense of belonging to a wider group. Likewise, the building up of the local community can develop through sharing and praying, hearing the insights, the concerns, and the life stories of others can help us recognize how much we have in common as followers of the Lord. In every community, there are good news stories that are known to few. The meeting, praying and discussing at local level can serve to form a community that searches together and fosters a sense of inclusion and patient listening. It can have a transforming influence. What comes from that sense of togetherness in the Lord can have lasting effects, perhaps more so than decisions that come in due time from higher authority. The Synod has to be inclusive and not be dominated by a top-down approach. While the Church is universal, its vibrancy at local level can be of much more significance in the lives of people. Sharing good news does offer life and hope. This is an aspect of synodality that does not have to wait for final decisions from Rome or elsewhere. In some ways, there is a hazard in looking too much for outcomes for decisions made in Rome or elsewhere at the end of a long process. These decisions have their place and their relevance in the life of the Church, but they are not the full story. They may pertain to forming a new vision for the Church if it is to be more outward-looking or to seek clarity of direction in the world of now. They might have reference to structural changes, such as the ordination of women or of married men, or revise how authority is exercised in the Church. These can point to a direction, but perhaps the main changes that are to occur are within ourselves, within our local areas if we are to become more vibrant communities. This is not to dismiss what will come from the national level or from Rome. Too much focus on them could lead to a disappointment about what was forwarded or not, and the decisions might not reflect something that was seen as important at local or diocesan level. Clarification of roles within the community is a means to an end. It is not the end though it has its importance. Yes, we look to the bigger decisions, but we need to ask if they will change us, or are they more about changing the system? What emerges needs to point the way to a simpler and humbler church, which has a clear sense of inclusiveness and belonging, one that fosters unity among us members, but which is true to the teaching of Jesus. The process, the search, is to be marked by respectful listening, by cooperation, not competition. If it does not challenge me to change in some way, then something is missing. The synod needs synodality, a working together, with conversion at personal, local, diocesan, national and universal levels, if it is to be a transforming experience. Conversion at all these levels is perhaps the greatest challenge, but has the greatest potential for new life. Returning to the sources, going back to the person of Jesus and his living word, be open to what the Spirit is saying to the Church, is a tremendous invitation. New life and a genuine working together as the people of God is far more than a problem-solving exercise that seeks to remedy 
some of the apparent ills. These concerns and questions are part of a bigger picture and are best looked at in a wider horizon in a church that has to be ever reforming. Yes, there are particular concerns and popular trends in the conversation for many, and they need to be heard in a context of faith and love that takes account of the example and message of Jesus. All will not be resolved to the satisfaction of some. The revelation of God continues, and there is a call to remain open to that, as well as to what we have as yet revealed truth. That is not to be compromised. God's saving love is the criterion, not human dissatisfaction or reducing something to the lowest common denominator. The God of love remains alive and active in our lives and in our world. God's word affirms at times, but also invites us onwards. It does not leave us where we are. We have further potential for love and a quality of presence that encourages others. May we have the grace to listen, the freedom to be guided, and the grace to respond. Jesus desires that we may be one, but that does not come easily or readily to any of us. Yet it is where we will find the greater peace and form a deeper sense of community in the Lord and with each other. Our synod and synodality are to serve the end which is the Lord, one the Lord desires, the praise and service of the Lord and his friends. For reflection, these are some questions. Where am I called to change? What would I like for the local faith community? What are my hopes and my fears for the Synod? If you would like some texts for prayer and reflection, John 17, 21, may they all be one. Philippians 2, 1 to 11, preserve unity in humility. Romans 14, 7 to 9, the life and death of each of us has its influence on others. May the Spirit guide you in your reflection and prayer and give you the openness to serve an ever-reforming church. God be with you. Mm -hmm.